Welcome to another installment of Mr. Dare's Integrated Algebra Online Review. Today's adventure, all set. Today what we're going to do is take a look at finite sets, which are these chart things, as well as other sets and set notation. So if you take a moment and go to your School Islands folder and pick up the assignment entitled Finite Sets. Your assignment should look like mine, and once again, I have a PDF file here. Yours doesn't quite look like this. The questions are in the same order, so it should be all right. We're going to be kind of jumping around because some of the questions are very similar, but they are, our, they are all really good review. So let's start, our take, start taking a look at a few of them. Let's look at number one here. It says, using the table, solve for x if x at h equals c. Now the funny symbol here is just a set operation. Our set is defined as follows. We have the letters c, a, t, and h going up and down. The well, at symbol kind of works like an addition sign, multiplication, division, or subtraction sign. It's really an operation that's going on with the set. It takes one letter and possibly turns it into another. So what we're going to do is take a look and see what the question is asking for again. It says solve for x, and we want x paired up with h to give us c. So what we need to do is first determine where we're looking. We're definitely looking at h's, and we're going to see what makes it produce a c. So h paired up with a t gives us a c. So h paired up with t gives us c, so x would be t. Now we can check to see if it goes the other way as well. So starting up here, we're going to look at h, and then go down to see where it fits in with t to give us c once again. So our correct answer once again is t, because we're filling in for x. Because if I was to try writing t at h, and going across first, and then down, we look for their intersection. T then h gives me c. So with finite sets, it's all about the intersection of the two columns and rows. So in this case, t and then h. It's this intersection point right here that we're most interested in. So this was a good first example of how to actually solve a lot of the problems in this uh, assignment. Let's take a look at a few others. Question number two deals with the star operation. Now the star operation, you probably don't know what it is, probably don't recognize it. But this table defines it for us, so we don't really have to have any prior knowledge. Let's take a look and see what the question is asking. Question two is asking about inverse element of the letter H. Now an inverse element is something that takes this letter, or number if this happens to have numbers in it, and brings this letter back to the identity element. So before we actually do inverses, we have to know what the identity element is. Now when these are all set up in tables, it's really easy to determine what the identity element is. Because all we have to do is look for a matching set. And what I'm talking about is we want something that will match going across in our table. If you take a look, this row right here is matched exactly to that top. And that's produced by t. And going up and down, it's the same thing. t, the top here, produces the letters m, a, t, h in the same order as they're going up and down. Therefore, we can say that t is the identity element because it does reproduce the top as well as the side. So t is the identity element. So at this point, you're probably asking yourself, so what? What does that have to do with anything? Well, an inverse element is something that gets paired up with whatever letter you're interested with 
and produces the identity element. So if we take a look at H, what we want to do is see what pairs up with it to give us T, the identity element. If we look down, T is produced right here under the H column. What we need to do then is look across to see what actually produces that. And it happens to be A. So going down H, we look until we get the identity element, and then look across to see what letter produces that. And it's A. Therefore, A is the identity element. If I was to write that formally, it would look like this. A star H equals T and T is our identity element. Now, in common numbers, we have an identity element for addition, and we have one for multiplication. Zero would be the identity element for addition, because any number that you add to zero, the result is zero. Like two plus zero equals two. You can take whatever the identity element is, add something to it, and it produces that something back out. In multiplication, the identity element is 1. If we take my favorite number, 27, and multiply it times 1, the multiplicative identity, you get 27 back out. So in this problem, A is the identity because when you pair it up with something, it gives you that identity element. So let's take a look at another question. All right, so question three says the operation spade for the set of the letters T, A, B, L, E is defined in the chart. The identity element for spade is which of the following? So once again, we need to find the identity element. So thinking back to the last example, recall that the way that we do it is we look for a duplicated row or column. You can look either place. In this case, if I look at my table, I look for the letters in the same order as they appear along the side. If I go up and down, here they are under B. Or if I look across, here they are again uh, across from B. So we can probably safely say that B is the identity element. In fact, we can actually say it. So the correct answer here is choice three. All right, question number four. Question number four, if we take a look at it, it says solve the equation y club five equals five for y in the system defined in the chart. Well, here's our chart. What we want to do is figure out what y has to be in order to get it back to five. So whatever we pair up with five has to produce five once again. So what we're going to do is look in our table and we're going to look in the five row. So looking in the five row, and the reason why we're doing that is because of this five. So we look across in the five row, and we want what we want this to equal is five. So in this particular highlighted row, we look for the five, and it comes from that five right there. It's right there. So now in order to figure out and solve this equation, we look up to see what number produces that with 5, and it's 3. So if I replace 3 with the y, just as a quick check, it should produce 5. So 3, go down until you reach the 5 row, and here it is, 5. So it does work out. So the correct answer here is choice two, which is three. All right, now let's just browse through some of these other questions. See if you can actually figure them out. Question five is a little different, but not all that entirely. The only difference is that this one has a sub parentheses, something that we haven't seen in the other problems. So Parentheses in sets and finite sets work the same way as they do in just your normal math, everyday math, order of operations. We have to do what's in parentheses first. So what this says is I have I 
the at symbol, or excuse me, not the at symbol, the alpha symbol, so I alpha L. So what I'm going to do is go across the I column, or row, go across, and then I want to go down the L, and where they intersect is the answer to that first set of parentheses here. And that would be L. Now I'm going to rewrite my problem. Just like what we do with order of operations and solving with numbers, I'm going to rewrite and now solve again. So now I have the problem O alpha L. So what we're going to do is take a look and I'll actually erase these so I can work this out. What I'm now going to do is look across the O column, a row, and then I'm going to look down the L column. Where they intersect is where my solution is. So they intersect at I, choice 3. Question 6. If you take a look at this one, again, these problems are starting to repeat themselves. This one, the only difference is we have these variables involved. I have x at x equals 6. Looks tricky. It's not all that tricky. What we're going to do is look for the same number going down and across that produces 6. Since x is the same, the numbers have to be the same. Like it'd have to be 2 at 2, or 4 at 4, or 6 at 6, or 8 at 8. One of those sets will produce 6. Whichever one does, that's our right answer. In this case, it might be more than one solution. In fact, it has to be. If you take a look at all of our choices, 2 could work, or 6, 6 or 8, 2 or 4, or 2, 6, and 8 all could work. So let's take a look and see which ones might actually work. So if I look, 2, go across until I reach the 2 column, produces 2. That one's not going to work. So all the ones that have 2's in them, not going to work. And hey, there's only one answer that doesn't. So let's just double check to make sure 6 and 8 both work for this problem. So if I go down to 6, and then across until I reach the 6th column, Hey, I do get 6 out. We're going to do the same thing for 8 to make sure that one works as well. So I go down until I reach 8, and then I go to the 8 column. And there's 6 again. 3 is definitely the correct answer. Alright, now we really will start looking through, because most of these will start repeating. So number 7. I'm confident you can do that one, as well as number 8, you can fill in the blanks, number 9, 10, all very similar to things that you've done before. Let's take a look at number 16, though, which is just another identity element and inverse question. To make sure that we have these well under our way. So this question says, given the addition table for the subset of the real numbers as shown below, the identity element is which of the following? So the identity element has to be in this set. Even though it's a subset of real numbers and they're using the plus sign here, unfortunately it's not as easy as going to be zero. We have to look inside the table, and once again, the identity element is one that will copy over the row or the column. So what we need to do is just look for a duplicated initial row or initial column. If we take a look in the table, going up and down, 4 produces that, because the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 are duplicated in our original column. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we can look and see, make sure it's the same for our row. Here's our initial row, 1, 2, 3, 4, and it's copied down here, going across with 4. So the identity element is going to be 4. Since we have the identity element, finding the inverse should be pretty easy. What I want to do is find the inverse of 3. Now remember, the inverse of 3 is the number 
in this case, that gets paired up with 3, that brings me back to the identity. So essentially, I'm going to fill in this blank. This 4, remember, it's just the identity element, and this 3 is what you're given. So we're going to fill in the blank. So what I'm going to do is look down until I reach the 3 in the column, and then I go across until I reach 4. And there it is right there. The number that gets paired up with 3 to give you 4 is 1. So 3, the plus with a circle around it, 1 equals 4. So the inverse of 4 for our table is going to be 1. All right, the rest of the problems you should be able to handle on your own. If you have any questions, though, 